too bad news. Uh, I, I cannot promise any optimism, as Laurent uh, assumed. Uh, the second bad news, you, you are still here uh, for another, I hope, only 10 minutes. I, I try to summarize, but I, I also would like to, to hear Lotz's comments because I would like to start by saying that Yes, it was in Florence when we got together with Lotzi and were talking about possibilities to to assemble some some economic political <coughs> economists with constitutional lawyers. And uh, frankly speaking, uh, uh, when when Lotzi suggested this, uh, I was a little bit pessimistic. Uh, Regarding my, my good friends who are all here, constitutional scholars, uh, whom I proposed Lotzi to, to invite, uh, but my pessimism went to, to, to his very ambitious uh, political economic uh, agenda, which, which went towards a kind of F-word, uh, federalism. Uh, and I did not know any of my my... Uh, good friends and colleagues who, who, whom I knew be uh, going in that direction. Uh, with the exception of Matei, uh, whom I read in the Fassum's blog, uh, changing his mind uh, and, and being uh, more optimistic about some at least uh, federal unionist uh, approaches, as uh, Federico's father, I know only Federico, I'm sorry for that, but, but I, <laughs> I, I really much, but I, of course I knew that you are going in that direction, but I do not count you as a constitutional scholar. Uh, so, uh, in that respect, uh, the question is whether, whether the, the long day was a success story uh, in order to bring together these two, two uh, types of scholars in the uh, uh, direction Lotzi wanted to, to, to have, namely towards the, the F word. Uh, I'm still a little bit skeptical, uh, despite Mate's presentation and paper, uh, I, I do not see much, much uh, 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 I, I would, how, how, how should I uh, form uh, progress? No, no, I, no, just, just I'm talking about the constitutional scholars as myself, so I'm still not convinced about about the federal option, but I, I learned a lot about, about uh, political economists' uh, uh, argument, and I'm certainly more convinced uh, today, at the end of the day, as I were in the beginning of the, of, of the day. So in that respect, we may say that, that uh, the conference was, was a success story. But, uh, uh, let me uh, also go back to the very beginning of the day, or even, even the, the preliminary uh, uh, paper uh, Lotzi distributed. As, as Boyan already pointed out in, during his presentation, it seemed to me as well as a way too optimistic about the state of, of, of Europe currently, because probably it was, was written before the Austrian and the Czech elections, I, I assume. But Istvan's uh, preliminary words also, also somehow emphasized this optimism in, in my, my ears, uh, which for me is still, still a kind of, of question whether there is any, any real progress uh, uh, after some, some progress certainly with the French, French election. The German election is already uh, 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 
uh, uh, uh, a mixed uh, 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 result with with the with the many mandates of the of IFD. So uh, I don't know whether we have have here a, a reason for for saying what what Mata is was saying in in his paper that that the way back to the nation state is is actually out of question i'm i'm afraid it's it's not out of question uh in if we 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 think about the entire uh, uh, uh europe so about the the reforms uh which were presented in in the different uh panels i i saw two different approaches one mostly uh, uh, by Dora Jurfi's really excellent presentation. If I understood correctly, her approach is rather a kind of top-down uh, approach uh, as regards the, the reforms. Uh, although she was the one who, who emphasized the importance of communities in different European uh, society and I, I have to I, I, I cannot stand not to, to say a word about uh, 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 Laszlo Chaba's comment on 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 this uh, uh, issue uh, regarding also to the possibility of economic uh, sanctions. Uh, he he. Uh, was talking about a, a concrete entep, entrepreneur in, in Hungary who is not getting EU fund because of the Hungarian government's uh, behavior towards uh, uh, European uh, values. I, I was thinking uh, uh, this is a, a really good example why the EU should go for economic sanctions because this would be the real, real uh, opportunity for those entrepreneurs not getting the funds because of their, their own government to vote against this government. So uh, uh, in that respect I, I would really argue for, for uh, uh, economic sanctions because in the case of Hungary and Poland I do not see any any other other possibility even I would be skeptical about Lotzi's very last last uh, comment about about the, the two speed uh, I'm not really sure although I have no reason to to claim this but I'm not really sure that in order to to remain in the EU and enjoying the benefits of the EU, all the EU funds, cohesion funds and other funds, Orban would rather uh, opt for, for, the, for the first speed, if he can. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a, a, an economist, but I don't think that, that Hungary is too far from, from, from fulfilling the former requirements of joining the the, the EU, uh, the Eurozone. So, uh, but this is speculation. But I, I don't think that 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 uh, just leaving leaving behind those backsliding member states, uh, it's it's not an option uh, for for the entire Europe. And even I I I'm I'm not convinced that it would would at work at all. Uh, so let me let me say uh, uh, some something on on my impressions about about the joint uh, exercise by uh, political economists and constitutional lawyers. And if you 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 may say this is a kind of critique towards the composition of the of the panels. So uh, the panels were. With the exception of Federico and and Boyan, were consisted of political economists on the one one hand and lawyers on the on the other hand. See the last panel. So probably it would have been a, a better option to to mix them together in order to more to give more chance to them to react to each other. Of course, 
in the audience, everyone can can uh, speak up. But uh, I, my impression of the entire day, which was was really exciting, but I I had the impression that we had two different uh, conferences, two two divided parts of the of the conference. Uh, and since I'm a lawyer. Uh, so let me let me uh, react to to some of the issues which which most mostly uh, uh, bothers me in the, in the fourth panel because this is my my profession and my my expertise uh, uh, dealing with with these uh, constitutional uh, issue and let me let me put some some uh, uh, presentations together uh, so first let me uh, talk about Matthijs and Dimitri's uh, presentation uh, together so in my my reading at at least both Matthijs and Dimitri are arguing for a kind of pluralism within the within the EU uh, I certainly read Matei's paper as, as, as a play for, for pluralism in a federal uh, union. And I also understood uh, Dimitri's argument against the, the, the very concrete uh, uh, issues of, of EU law primacy as a play for, for pluralism. Uh, Allowing for for certain member states to to have their own uh, uh, constitutional uh, uh, solutions against the ECJ's uh, push towards a, a, a very unique interpretation of the EU law primacy. At least this was my my reading of your your uh, uh, oral presentation, not uh, not the written one. So my question to both of you here, uh, I know you, you, you have no, no chance to answer the question, <laughs> so it's, it's rather... Hmm? I can answer at the next event. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, but what, what about then with, with, with the, the region we are, we are talking about, East Central Europe, what about those constitutional identities both the Hungarian and the Polish court uh, is referring to constitutional identities in order to to deny the compliance with with uh, 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 EU values. In other words, this is a kind of misuse or abuse of of uh, the constitutional identity, Article Two of the EU. And altogether, it's a it's an abuse of constitutional pluralism altogether. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just want to say that that why I'm a pluralist myself, as opposed to Federico, who is not. But I I also see the the, the dangers of of pluralism, the the possibilities of of abuse and and misuse. Uh, also. Uh, let me let me put together uh, 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 two other other uh, presentations by by Matei and uh, Laurent. Why M Laurent was arguing in in his presentation and and in his paper uh, for using all the the current uh, tools of the EU. Uh, Infringement procedures, rule of law mechanism, Article Seven, uh, uh, against everyone, uh, but especially those backslidings. Uh, while uh, Mate, in his written paper, uh, emphasizing uh, the the democratic deficit of of the EU, and even arguing that this democratic deficit is is somehow uh, disqualifies the EU to go against those backsliding member states. This is, you even refer probably to Weiler's argument, do not throw 
stones if you live in a in a in a glass house. Uh, so in in that respect, uh, I I would opt for Lawrence option, saying as long as we have those mechanisms and we do not have yet uh, a, a fully fledged democratic EU system with a new institutional setting, even though we should emphasize the, the democratic uh, deficit, uh, uh, we should also also fight for for all the all the tools used by the European Union against all the member states without compromises. Uh, at least this is easy to say as a lawyer. Of course, I'm totally aware that this is this is a political uh, issue. And as Lauren said, uh, literally in in his presentation, you need a political will to 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 have that. Uh, okay, and then I, I also saw a, a, a parallel, uh, but somehow uh, 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 different emphasis, what, and not only in the force panel, so what could be the very reasons of, of this backsliding in our region? And I'm not talking only about about Hungary and Poland. I'm I, I'm totally aware that Slovakia has a, a lot of rule of law problems uh, uh, outside outside the, the the Visegrad for also also uh, Romania uh, started to have very serious rule of law problems. Uh, with undermining the, the independence of the judiciary, and we don't don't know what will happen in the in the Czech Republic after electing a, a populist, uh, 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 most probably populist prime minister. So uh, that this uh, question, what is the very reason? Uh, Boyan tend to argue about, if I understood correctly, more about economic reasons of, of the backsliding, while others uh, uh, rather about cultural uh, reasons. Uh, I, I think that, that both are, are, are present in, in those, those uh, developments. Uh, the question is, and this is the de decisive question to, to Matej's, Matej's approach to be fulfilled, whether we, we really can, can rely on the people, as you, you say, whether we can rely on people without having a real constitutional culture. So whether we can expect people to think about a, a new constitution, either for, the, for their own country, or not to speak about a, a European constitution without really, really having a constitutional culture and without having real a focus on constitutional issue. In, in, and I very much agree with, with those uh, Dorothy Bole or Bela uh, Greshkovic uh, from CEU saying that the entire transition in East Central Europe is it was was not really uh, a, a good uh, 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 possibility for those East Central European uh, uh, societies to focus on on constitutional issues. M much more important issues were were uh, uh, more important. So uh, I'm a little bit skeptical about that, even though I'm very. Uh, sympathetic to to your to your approach uh, because I do not see uh, 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 solutions for the problems of of our region in the current setting and I I share your view if there is no possibility to solve problems in in this institutional setting we should look for a new one and let me finish by 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 something which was written by my favorite Hungarian uh, writer, the late Peter Esterházy, who died a little bit more than a year ago. And uh, Peter has, has said that I, I started as a, 
my life as an East European. Then luckily I became a Central European. And at, at the end of his life, he said, uh, I'm, I'm again feeling myself as, as someone uh, in the periphery, outside, as the rest of Europe. So this is not a pessimistic note, but, but what, what we should do to try to, to, to make everything in our capacity as lawyers and political economists to try to, to make this, this region again part of Europe uh, as being true Central Europeans. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Gabor, for your concluding remarks. May I just thank you very shortly, first of all.